So I'm gonna do something a little different on this channel today. I'm gonna double dip on the production and do a review of the uh, Fairweather Barebow tab with the uh, the ring instead of, you know, elastic basically. I'm gonna give a review on that and tell you what I think about it, give my first impressions of it because I haven't shot it yet. As you can tell, the leather is brand new, unbroken in and untrimmed. And I'm also going to get my crawls down with my Barebow today for, you know, your basic field round, feet of field that is, or world archery field as it is now called. Uh, so I'm gonna get my five meter to 50 meter sight marks, and I'm gonna show you in this video how I go about doing that, along with my review of this uh, Simon Fairweather barebow tip. Before we go any further, a big thank you to Chung, I believe. That's how I would pronounce his name. He's, uh, at least that's his handle. He's one of my Patreon supporters, as well as he is active on my Discord server, which is an exclusive benefit to Patreon members. And he sent me this cool Fairweather Barebow tab to test out because he was so dead sold on this ring uh, locator device for your middle finger that uh, he said, you know what, I'm gonna send it to you. And he sent it to my PO box, which is in the description below for people to send some cool stuff to. I've got a lot of catching up on that stuff to do, by the way. There's lots of things coming, and this week I'm gonna jam in a whole bunch of content and do a whole bunch of reviews. I've got bows and limbs and risers and uh, finger tabs and all sorts of other stuff because people have sent me some things over the last bit, and I very much appreciate that. It's very exciting. And in addition to that, because I need to do some shooting, I might as well get my crawls down for a feed of field round. We have feet of field state championships coming up at uh, you know later on in the year in Florida, and I would like to shoot that. So I'm going to show you how I get my sight marks. And uh, step one, it's a little controversial and not exactly common. Step one, take your target face down, flip it over. Step two, get yourself some electrical tape, and you're going to want to do two horizontal lines that are roughly you know level, not just one line. But you want to do two lines, make a double thick line because you got to be able to see it at 50 meters. And that's what we're going to be shooting at today. The reason I do this is a very, um, not necessarily common tip, especially in recurve and as far as I know, not in barebow, but it's a little more popular in the compound world. When you do this, you completely eliminate the left to right, need, you know, the need of aiming. And all you're focusing on is your elevation impact. So what that means is it's going to give you a really, really good split and the actual gaps for your sight marks. And it's gonna be a lot more consistent and a lot more accurate doing it this way because you're not actually worried about aiming at a circle, you're just worried about your height. You eliminate the left to right and you have less distractions because of it. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna start at five meters and work my way back. I have my win and win bear bow sitting down over there on the ground and I do have these X10s that I'm gonna be using. I have them currently tuned for 50 meters because you know I was shooting some 50 meter rounds and playing with that stuff and I'm not gonna change it just because I'm gonna stick with my plan of shoot more volume, get stronger, and eventually I'll play, play with and tweak the, uh, the equipment to make it better for me. But instead of wasting time doing that, I'm gonna focus on developing as an archer first and kind of get my feet underneath me before I really even spend the time to you know get super technical because I'm not even at the level that I think it's gonna make a difference yet to be perfectly honest, especially because I don't even have my sight marks and my crawls basically. So that's what I'm gonna focus on today. And you know, if you're a developing archer as well, I would suggest that too. Spend less time on the equipment, more time shooting, and you'll benefit from it more in the future. This is also a new way that I'm gonna be doing some reviews because I have a lot of reviews to do. I have a lot of things that people have sent me. I'm very grateful for that. And I'm also very, uh, you know, apologetic because I haven't gotten to them sooner. It's been crazy. And I think this is gonna be a good solution to kind of double dip and do different videos because I wanted to get some sight marks and I might as well review this tab. So if you like this kind of format, comment below, let me know. If you prefer it the other way to break it apart and separate stuff, I understand that too. So. I'm gonna go back to five meters, it's really far back there. 
I got a camera here uh, that I'm going to be videotaping the impact points so you'll be able to check that out and kind of see my progression of trying to get my crawls down. So I'm going to shoot a few shots here with the bare bow, the Fairweather bare bow tab here at 5 meters uh, before I trim the tab and see if it needs trimming. What's unique about this tab is this plate here, the front half, actually unbolts and separates and you can put where that white strip is, you can put different graduated marks that come with the tab or a blank slip of paper like this and you can mark your own actual crawls and that way you have only your crawls, only your marks on the tab and it's a very nice unique feature. It's a uh, basically injection molded plastic. I believe the leather is actually kangaroo leather. It's not traditional cowhide or you know cordovan, which is horse hide. And it's supposedly naturally waterproof. I've heard a lot of uh, people really liking it, and so I'm going to be interested to see how it actually feels. So let's see. I'm going to just uh, I'm going to crawl down to like the bottom of the sun because there's no real marks here to figure out exactly how deep I'm crawling, and we'll just shoot from here, five meters. Not even close enough. Uh, I had to move my face there because the corner of the uh, actual tab face is sticking into my face so I can't get into my anchor as I would like to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these hobby scissors that I've got here. I'll have a link in the description for them because they really help with cutting and trimming leather and I'm just going to go ahead and round the corners off so it doesn't poke me in the face and you know cause a disturbance in my anchor and my shot sequence here. So all I did is basically just round the corners. I'll see how far down I need to go. Three quarters of the way. Closer. I am using the sniper drop away. My anchor is very low, so my crawls are gonna be very, very deep. Right, so I'm getting closer now. I'm actually almost in the hole of the bottom of the tab where the bottom uh, mounting hole is. So really, really far down there, but that's okay. It's gonna be a little challenging, you know, cause I think the reason I haven't tried this ring is because it's kind of hard to tilt the tab back and forth like this. And I need to do that because when I go to get my deep crawls, I have to like pitch my hand like this to reach down with my thumb to mark it. And it's just a little difficult to do that. And you know, that's part of the reason why I wanted to try it in this video because five meters is the deepest crawl I'm ever gonna need. And it is pretty difficult. You know, I have to like basically pull my finger part way out of the tab to find my crawl mark to then try to put the ring back on. It's just a little tough. So what I'm going to do, because I have a couple of these pieces of paper, is I'm going to start making some marks, preliminary marks with, I should use a pencil, but I don't have one handy. So I'm just going to start with a pen to just kind of get some preliminary marks to crawl from up or down slightly. And then I'll come back with a black Sharpie and make a permanent mark. And then I'll transfer them over to a new tape so it's nice and clean and only has my uh, five and 10 meter increments. That one's just a hair low. It's hard up close shooting out these uh, the double wide tape because it's pretty wide. It's pretty big. But at 50, you really need the two widths uh, because it's really difficult to see just one width. That's really close. Yeah. So that's more than close enough for a five meter mark. Yeah, so that's that's good enough to say that that first mark is solid. As you can see, I don't know if you can see it, it's a teeny tiny, tiny, tiny little mark down there uh, because I didn't want to make a big mark because I've got a Sharpie here to make it a lot more permanent. And that will be my five meter mark. Uh, I'm gonna be roughly halfway through that piece of white paper down there uh, because 
you are allowed two different length marks or two different colored marks or whatever maximum of two different distinctions and uh you know so i'm going to do the fives short and the evens long or the zeros long so now i'm going to go back to 10 meters and continue shooting uh, so far first initial impressions of the tab is uh you know it feels comfortable i can feel my hook i'm just using two layers here at 46 pounds ish 44 pounds somewhere in that neighborhood uh so you know i think for lighter weights this two thickness is ideal uh, adding another backing layer as a you know third layer or another uh, tab face as a third layer possibly might be a good idea um, for heavier draw weights it just feels a little thin and i think i might get blisters if i were to shoot a lot of arrows with it all right back here at 10 meters so i'm going to crawl up on the tab face slightly and just continue to figure out the sight marks Oh wait, you hit high, you go down, not up. Not quite there, so I gotta get the arrows and do it again. All right, so I think I figured out why I was having some issues there. I got it, and then I didn't, and then I got it, and I thought it might be a problem after shooting five meters. I'm gonna shoot one more shot here uh, to verify that I got it on the right mark, and then I'm gonna explain to you a little bit of a negative thing that I'm looking at. Um, it's just something that I need to be aware of, and you need to be aware of as well if you have one of these tabs. Because it's definitely gonna throw your marks off if you're messing it up like I am. Got it, so that 10 meter mark is my 10 meter mark. I will mark it really fast. What I'm seeing that is an actual problem, at least for me. So that's my 10. You'll see that it's longer and bigger, full, full length line. So those are my evens again, and the half marks are my fives. So what I have noticed that is a problem, I've got to uh, put an arrow in the bow and show you. It has to do with being consistent in the actual crawl because my reference point is changing ever so slightly when I am having some issues. So let me show you here. <clears throat> what I'm having an issue with is when I go to butt the tab up against the arrow, you can touch it like this, or the leather can stop against the arrow like that. And it's not, it's, it's got rounded edges, and that feels definitive, but that's the consistent reference point. So it's tough, tough to say that I really don't like that, that it's not a sharp edge, a definitive stop that is at the same height as the leather is. Um, you know, I'm, I've been shooting a Yoast tab since I started Barebow so far, and this is the first non-Yoast tab I've been shooting, and that has a definitive, you know, stop because the top of the tab is also where the top of the leather is. And so for this to have that inconsistency there, it's just something that you need to be aware of. Because when you go from this tab, which has the plate and the leather at the same height, that's a stop. Whereas this, the plate and leather do not end at the same place, and I can have two different stops. And that's what I was just dealing with there at 10 meters. Sometimes I was on correctly, and I hit the tape, and when I went up too high, I hit high. So just beware if you have this tab, that's an issue, and it's something you need to make sure you have dialed in, especially if you're trying to get sight marks. Okay, 15 meters. <laughs> Change in the crawl, and it's not making a difference. I think that's the beauty of Barebow, isn't it? Close.
So that's pretty close. So I'm gonna go pull those arrows and probably shoot one more to make sure that my mark's on, but uh, that's 15. A little off on that one. I wonder if I accidentally slipped up on the, uh, the leather instead of the tab plate. Yeah, I think that's what happened. I'm gonna do one more just because. Um, like I said, I think it's uh, not something I'm used to, that's for sure. Having that face and the plate not being at the same height. Yep, that's my 15. So I'll mark that again and I'll show you what I got. It's an odd gap there between five to 10, it's big and then it shortens up at 15. Might be because of my weird, weird deep crawl or uh, because of, I don't know what, the sniper rest or whatever. It is what it is. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it smooths, if it smooths out, and we'll go back to 20. I'll go get him and shoot another one. I think it takes getting barebow sight marks a little longer than recurve. So that looks pretty good. I keep chasing my tail, but that's really close. And maybe that's as proficient as I'm gonna get, missing, you know, lines by about that much at 20, at least for the time being with this current setup that I'm dealing with. Because again, it's a new tab not even broken in and it can definitely change over time this is the only way to give true feedback is to actually do it gaps are starting to even up now all the way up to 20 so back to 25 and so on One more and we should be good. Well, gap's changing again. Might be bare bow, might be the tab, might be me. I have no idea. Keep going. Next is 30. I guess that gap opening up like that kind of makes sense because, you know, as you go back further with a recurve, your gaps get bigger and bigger. Barebow, it should be the same, it's just upside down, so it looks funny to me. Closer together, the closer you are, farther apart, the farther you are. You know, because of, you know, velocity loss, downrange, losing kinetic energy, things like that. Just a touch high. Touch low. So I'm at the distance to where, use the same crawl, shoot for a group, see if the group is divided by the line. I mean, the group is pretty centered on there, so I'm gonna call that 30 meters. That is close enough for me, at least for my my stage right now. You know, I need to shoot a whole lot more before I can really say that's not good enough because, you know, I still don't know what I'm capable of. It's 30 meters, it's not 50 meters, but uh, you know, the vertical group variance looks to be about that much at 30. Yep, so the gaps are slightly opening up as I go down. And I do still struggle, even though the crawl is about halfway down the tab face, still struggling to keep that from bumping up too high. It's just one of those things that I need to integrate into my uh, shot routine to make sure that I look there twice before I set the crawl and then afterwards before I move the tab plate just to make sure that it's in the right place. Um, you know, you, you can't afford a simple mistake like that and because of that, I'm leaning towards I just am not sold. 
I do like the kangaroo leather so far. It feels very soft. It breaks in very quickly, but it is definitely too thin in two layers, at least for the draw weight that I'm shooting, as my ring finger is already starting to get a bit tender. I don't really have heavy duty shooting calluses because I haven't been shooting that much, to be honest. Full disclosure, I just want to get some decent sight marks so I can start playing at different distances and have a good time. Well, I have a group that I'm trying to make it go down. Well, that looks pretty good. That's 35, we'll call that. Looks a little short. I'll probably come back and revisit that one. That's what we got so far. So that's really, really close. I think it is definitely close enough to call it a mark for now. And that's my 40 mark up at the top there. So two more ends, 45 and 50, hopefully. That one's real close. Well, I think that's a good enough mark there for 45. One more end, and hopefully I'll have my sight marks from five to 50. Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> that mark's a little sloppy, a little wide towards the front there, but uh, relatively even splits, not too bad. All right, and finally, 50 meters. Well, I think that's really close. I should probably shoot another end here at 50 to make sure, um, but I think it's actually really, really, really close. I mean, 50 meters is a relatively long distance for a bare bow, so that is my final mark, at least that I'm gonna get today. You can see all the way up at the top, that'd be 50, all the way down the bottom, that'd be five, and that's in meters. And, you know, it looks, it looks pretty good. What I would do is I would, you know, address certain things about anomalies in the gaps. Like where do gaps not look right? And it looks like 5, 10, 15, 20 is a little low. If you look at the 20 mark down here, it's a little low relative to the others. So I'll probably go back to 20 and uh, re-verify that. But all the others look fairly even with the exception of the five to 10 but that might be just because of my extreme crawl. So, you know, that is what it is, and hopefully you learn some stuff about how to get some sight marks. Start up close, progress back every five to 10 meters. You roughly average the gap spread that you're getting and then jump that much further for the next five to 10 meters or whatever your increments are. And I like the double lines. It just takes away that left to right need of aiming. And as you can see, my groups are all over the place, left and right, the arrows impact differently and I'm not at all trying to put them next to each other. 
just trying to hit the line. It makes it a little bit easier. But anyway, now that I've shot a decent amount of arrows with this Fairweather tab, I can at least give my initial feedback. You know, just like I thought, potentially a little too thin uh, for my draw weight immediately. It breaks in very, very quickly. The tab face is already starting to show signs of wear on it, which is nice. Uh, due to the texture of it, it's really hard to see when the wear stops, so it'd be hard to get a good cut line yet. I think I would need to shoot it more. So the ring is an interesting idea and I do like it because there's not elastic. It's not squeezing your finger and it kind of feels a little bit more free for lack of better terms. Uh, but it's a little bit limiting because I can't move my finger independent of the tab. I have to, I'm still stuck on the tab and to get into that deep, deep crawl that I've got because of my anchor, it makes it very challenging. I do, like I said, when I'm at full draw, I like the feel of it because it's comfortable. It's not squeezing my finger, pinching my finger or nothing. I think I could like it to be a little snugger and I can't get it a little snugger because I've got relatively unique fingers, at least for me. My knuckles are huge, whereas my finger is very skinny. So, you know, once the ring gets past here, like it barely fits past that middle knuckle. But then once it gets past here, I've got a lot of slop in it. I wish it was like more rubbery, more stretchy to, to hold the finger a little bit more firmly. I might have to stretch it over the knuckle, that'd be fine, but I'd like to hold my finger a little more firmly. I do like that it comes with different graduations and blank tapes that you can just sandwich in there. Super easy, two screws to change out tab faces, to add or remove layers, to move the ring up and down. I like that a lot. The injection molded part of it keeps the cost down. You know, the potential natural water resistance of kangaroo leather or the way it's processed, I'm not sure which. That's neat. I don't know if it will last as long as cordovan. And by the looks of it, I'm gonna guess no, just because it is so thin and there's no grain to it like cordovan has. And I just don't think that it's gonna hold up as long just because of the thickness of it. Thinner tab faces, in my experience, definitely wear out much quicker. A negative, like I said, hard to get in the deep crawl. That top edge isn't at the same edge of the leather, and you can't make it that way, otherwise you lose your capturing of this top mount up here. And it's, you know, you just can't file it. You can't fix that, you can't cut it away, and I can't, I can't fix it. It's just something I have to deal with, and I have to look up, bump it against a knock, look down, set my crawl, look back up, make sure I didn't move it up because I did several times as you saw here. Um, overall, I think for the price point, it's a good value. There are a lot of good options in it. Definitely, if you don't get the pro version that comes with the extra layer and you're getting just the tab and then you order the ring separately, get an extra tab face, especially if you're gonna shoot over 35 pounds, you'll probably need another layer, at least one extra layer. It's just a little on the thin side. But I do like that it's personalized. You know, you get the option of a soft ring or a stiffer ring that comes in the packaging. That's nice. There's little serrations inside of here to raise and lower the ring. You can see the slot is adjustable, so you can adjust it up and down. Um, you know, maybe, maybe I'd like it on my index finger instead of the middle finger for allowing my hand to crawl. I don't know, maybe my ring finger, I don't know. I'll probably play with it just to see how it feels. I don't know if it'll go high enough to do just the index finger, so. There's that. But uh, overall, I like this. I will have links in the description below on the, uh, the scissors again that I use to trim this thing because you really need some good quality hobby grade scissors to do some trimming. I was very sloppy because this isn't a final trim, it's just a preliminary trim, so I didn't hit my face with the leather. Thank you again to Chung for sending me a Fairweather Barebow tab with a ring on it so I can play with that and see what the ring hype is all about. I do like it, it is way more comfortable. Is it more secure? No, because of my finger to knuckle size ratio. Now if I had, you know, meaty fingers down here, it would be a lot more secure and snug and connected, but it's not stretchy, it's soft, but it's not stretchy enough to get a size smaller to get it in there. Actually, I did order a size smaller, two sizes down from this, and I couldn't possibly get my finger into it, so I had to order some more to uh, make it actually fit. But anyway, overall, I like it. It's just a little thin, and you gotta be careful when you're crawling.